do was spike them with magic mushrooms. And so the scene before, which you, which you haven't, we haven't shown, um, they have got so high. And um, a couple of the characters from season one basically just give them so many shrooms. Too many. Too many. And um, so they've had this quite kind of major night um, where it's all gone a bit weird. And the clip you've just seen starts from the morning after. So they've had quite an experience. And what could we do to make that experience a little more intense? Um, well, we thought, let's get the druids to come in and kill them all. And uh, so yeah, that was the idea. Yeah, the, the idea was that we wanted all the Romans to sort of realize that they didn't want to be Romans anymore. And just as they wake up and it's all nice and fluffy and dawn and they're all in love with each other and the world, the druids attacked and killed them all. So don't do drugs, kids. So that's what you're. That's what's going on there. <laughs> Lesson learned. It's, it's a it's a family show. It's a special Disney family show. <laughs> it's all rainbows and unicorns. That's all it is. Um, I love the way that uh, the scene is constructed because sometimes when you get scenes like that in other historical or fantasy shows, you get quick cuts or it's very very dark. You don't know what's going on, and it's it's. Like, oh my god, again, to give that feel of action, but you've given a lot of room to breathe in this scene, and there's been a colour palette change as well, which I really, really love. In terms of a writing point of view, how do you go about constructing fight scenes like that and action sequences? Um, well, <clears throat> the, the, what we were watching there was, was in large part down to our love fantastic director we had for this episode, Rob Savage, and his wonderful editor, um, I think what we said was they fight. <laughs> yeah. Or the druids attack. Yeah, so um, it's you now. And, uh, and Rob um, ran with it and he just, he, he, he loved storyboarding. He loves, as you can probably tell, um, blood and horror, peck and par, old school, actual blood, not CGI violence. And we just encouraged him to, to fill his boots. and. And he did, and that was great. So, and we also uh, season two. I mean, season one. If we're if we're totally honest, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, these guys did, but we we really did. Um, and um, I, you know, I think halfway through season one, we kind of suddenly got the idea of what we were making. Um, and the first half of season one, we had no idea what we were doing. So. It was quite nice to kind of get into the rhythm of go, okay, this is the show. And then in season two, the joy, of course, for us as, as um, the creators and writers was to say, um, okay, what did we like from season one? And, and what do we like about our characters? And how do we push it all? Um, and we had this incredible palette of actors to, to play with. And literally we just said, okay, what do, what do we enjoy that we can kind of play more with? And with a scene like this, there was a similar idea of just going, okay, you know, surely we want to see high Romans and surely we want to see druids killing high Romans was a kind of simple idea. And then, and then music-wise, we thought, uh, let's just play with the music here as well. And as Tom said, really kind of lean into the idea of a kind of psychedelia, British psychedelia um, and the rock and roll feel um, that is embedded in the show, not just it's cool to have rock and roll but actually the vibe of the show is that's what it is it's a it's it's got that ancient you know british rock and roll vibe to it which is uh and so rob savage brilliantly as director just went okay i want to really go for it and we said and we encouraged him just said do what you want now you, you mentioned that rock and roll vibe quite a few times which you totally you can see from what we're watching it comes across and there has been an array of people that absolutely love this show, including me, like lots of fans, but, you know, there are some haters online sometimes and people will come out and go, it's not got that epic orchestral feel to it, or you know what I mean? So how do you respond to people that are nitpicking? How do you respond to those negative comments? I think it's important to make the show you want to make. So what happens is, you know, creatively we sit back and they, these guys sit back and they we know what show we want to make and you know we have taken time to sort of see our vision and what it is 
And obviously people all the time have opinions about what they want to see and what else is out there. And sometimes you listen to that and sometimes you don't. But what it, what's really important is if you start to chase a vision that's out there, that's other people's, you'll lose your own. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be part of what you want to create and keep coming back to why you wanted to do this show. Very quickly, you know, be, you can be spread, you can get mission creep very quickly on shows like this, which you, we hope to be with this show for a long, long time and we have great visions about where we want to go. But to be true to our vision, we have to stay with that. Listen, but absolutely be true to our vision. And a sequence like you've just seen, that's our vision. It's not coming from anybody else. It's not trying to ape other people. It's giving the creative people in, that we've employed license to do what they do best. And what's great about that uh, sequence we've just seen is its point of view. You know, our idea of the Druids is that they're this sort of we like to think of them as these hippie sort of loving people and actually we see them here as the people who are defending their land you have to be careful and remember that the Romans are the invading force and these are people uh, protecting their land and their belief system and everything to go with it and that's wonderful so it's always important to come back to the vision that you had as collective people of the show you want to make and you know, in that old stay, uh, saying of like, if you build it, they will come. And that for us is about building the show that we want to. And at the end of the day, we sit there and we watch it, we go, are we proud of that? And if we're proud of it, then we put it out. Cool. Yeah, I think that's totally right. And, and, and I, think, I think also, you, you can't ever, you, I mean, just to add, add to what David said, you can't ever, um, you want, of course, everyone to love it. Of course you do. And, and, and we want as many people as possible to love the show. But, you, but we'll never, ever, if you're making something which is so unique to, to itself, as it were, um, there are going to be people that are going to go, uh, I want to watch a really historical show. I mean, people who want to watch a historical show need to watch a historical show. I mean, like, this show is not, is not that one. Um, I think the only... I don't think any of us read a history book, actually, did we? We knew we knew that the Romans did invade Britannia, but I think that's that's, that's the only. That's a good start. So that's, 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 a good, that's a good start. And then, you, and then there are people who comment and say, but they, you know, but that, that this happened and that didn't happen. I go, I have no, I'm sure. And also, by the way, they, they're speaking in English, so not Latin and, and Celt or whatever. I think everyone called. needs to calm down. Cup of tea and a biscuit and just find the show for them. Yeah. I think like one thing that is true about the show, I mean, obviously historical accuracy isn't our priority, but it, power is something that we research a lot. It's certainly something I look at a lot, is that how people are manipulated, how power is used, how populaces are manipulated all the time, the idea of how fear drives people's decisions, things like that, violence, how people use violence, how the threat of violence, uh, coercion, uh, divide and rule, things like that. So inside our show, you know, it has all the, the, the historical setting, if not its accuracy, but the truth of the show behind power, particularly invading power and, uh, you know, uh, colonial power, I think is very accurate. And uh, certainly from my point of view, reading about how people use power when they're in positions to govern people is really important. And I think Tom and Jez and everybody who writes the show and creates the show, that's what we're giving out there. And I think that's really important. And those are themes that are still prevalent today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, human beings are very predictable, we've not changed. So yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we're still exactly the same. Now, quick question before we hand it over to the floor for some fan questions. So for those who haven't caught up on season one yet, shame on you, why are you here? Um, I want you to try and sort of, maybe in one sentence or a couple of words, encapsulate why people should catch up on season one to get straight into season two. Why should they watch? Oh, just to have fun, I think. If you just want to have a really good laugh. Um, this is a show, you know, I, I mean, it's a, for, for us, the other thing I wanted to say, it's a real privilege to be at Comic-Con because this is, you know, we want we want the fans to to go for this, and and Comic Con for us is exactly the place that we'd like to be because um, we want people to have a laugh. This isn't we're not taking it too seriously. Um, having said that, we hope we're making a really great show, 
and uh, we just want everyone to have a great laugh. That was not one sentence, was it? <laughs> Jesus. Just let me go, just keep going. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, okay, let's hand it over to the floor because you guys are the, the people that make this show, okay? And how great it is. So, let's, questions. Got a guy in the front here, there's people over there. Go for it. Hi, uh, uh, question for Eleanor. Uh, you've obviously, um, sorry, I don't like these things. Uh, you've obviously uh, transversed um, on TV and film. Um, how does it feel going back to this character after you've been in something like when this, this year? I mean, Britannia is wild and it's chaotic and it's full of fun. And, you know, to, to go on to a project where it's, you know, very, very dark and, you know, it's a huge contrast, obviously. So to be able to come back to something like this and have an amazing amount of fun. You know, I, I love being able to do a variety of roles and, you know, I always like to make sure that the, uh, that the women I'm portraying are people that I think would be a good example for other young women. And so, you know, who better than this young woman that I get to portray? It's an absolute honor. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a contrast to uh, some of the other projects that I've been on recently, but Kate is, most incredibly fun character you could ever wish to play. I've, I've grown up with this character. I started this series when I was 14, I'm 18 now, and you know, I've got to watch myself develop along with this young woman, and I, I couldn't be more grateful for that. And a question in the middle. Thank you. Uh, I've just got a question about the sort of uh, origins and influences. Um, I can see that you're mentioning about the kind of um, the sort of uh, psychedelic English kind of heritage, um, and I, you know, the sort of show certainly um, brings across that sense of um, sort of uh, yeah folk heritage, pop culture, the kind of uh, Led Zeppelin for kind of um, you know uh, musical influences there, obviously Donovan, um, and I can also see I suppose the um, sort of uh, 70s cult cinema canon there, sort of. Which find a general and uh, Wicker Man, um, uh, Ben Wheatley's uh, Field in England, I can feel you know, these sort of influences. I suppose I was just going to ask if you have any sort of um, homework, kind of uh, cultural references that you would recommend fans go and have a look at, you know, that influenced your creation. Um, as well, um, musically, I think was the biggest in terms of the sort of the, the, the vibe of the show. It's all that early 70s English, which season label, Joe Boyd Productions, Fairport Convention. Um, it's, that was what, it was that folk rock, English folk rock, not blues folk rock, it was that English folk rock um, moment that happened in the early 70s, when I think young English people, especially, were looking back at their own history and trying to make a different sort of sense of it than they'd had at school, a much more psychedelic sense that was much more personal. And, and for me and Jez anyway, that, I mean, we grew up in St Albans, which is just full of Roman ruins. And the parts that we first drank cider in, and yes, dropped acid in, were full of Roman ruins. And so that's a big part of, the, of just the vibe of this, is that I remember being in that feeling of being somewhat ancient, where stuff had gone down. Not all of it pretty, um, but it was important. And, and that being age 13, 14, 15, and going home and listening to your mum's folk rock collection is largely to blame for. So don't, don't unless you can exactly replicate that experience, I can't really, I can't really recommend a reading list. <laughs> so, thanks for the question. Thank you for the question. Next question, please. Uh, question here. Sorry, this is a question for David. Uh, you spoke briefly, briefly about power, and I think throughout your career you've done an excellent job of portraying uh, power in previous roles, and certainly in Britannia. I uh, just wondered if you can continue to carry that forward into the Marvel Phase 4. <laughs> yeah, that's a rumour I'm not allowed to talk about. It. Well, I know that I'm not allowed to, but uh, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about that. So, uh, but that's quite an interesting question. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions? We have time for one more question.